is Isabina at Cross Keys Crafts. It's December the 10th, which means I'm going to open another, well, it's not really a door, but uh, it's my homemade um, advent calendar. I put lots of dies in here. If you haven't watched the beginning of my series, go back to my playlist and have a look what I've done so far. And I'm going to see which, uh, which is the die for today. Oh, I see it's a very tiny one. Yes. It's a little goat. I bought this a few months ago because I wanted to make some greeting cards showing where I live. I live in Hladidno and if you don't know Hladidno, Hladidno is in North Wales and Hladidno became famous um, during lockdown because our local goats that live on the Great Horn decided to come down from the, the hill and to feed in the town and they were walking all over the place like they owned it and so it's become a bit of a symbol for Hlandit now and I thought it would be nice to make some greeting cards for Hlandit now. I since have then, um, sorry, since then I have stopped making cards for sale. I was getting a bit frustrated and not being able to sell a lot so at the moment I'm only uh, crafting for fun but yeah i'm sure we'll have fun with this little one and i'm sure we'll have an opportunity to send this card to somebody so yeah i'll see what i can do with this little fella obviously he's very small but i'll probably make a clean and simple card so i see you either halfway through the process or with a finished card and talk you through what i did Okay, I want to show you a few tips and tricks along the way of my process. Um, the first one is I have cut this frame from these two nesting dies. You saw them the other day when I created the gingerbread house. Um, I find these dies, I bought them in Germany in a shop. I found they leave some sort of stray bits on the end. I left this bit to show you what I mean. Let me put it against the dark green. So you've got these things hanging off here and it's easy to peel them off but there's still some residue here so what I do is I just take a nail file and I just file these off and then they come off very neatly and it's worth doing that because otherwise your card looks really really untidy you see this comes off once I use the nail file on it Make also sure if you've got stray bits on your cutting board that you get rid of it because they might leave an impression on your next um, cut element. The next thing I want to show you, and this is why I cut this little goat twice, when I colour this in, when I coloured this in on the horns at the top, I used, oh sorry, I'll just put my brown away, um, so I used just an alcohol marker but I did not only paint it on the top here because that still shows the side I also went let me just turn around so you can see the angle I also ran, went round the sides and I think again this does make a difference when you stick it down so and the last thing I want to show you and this is why I actually stopped making my card oh by the way I used two um, pieces of this sort of landscape cut bits they were left from another Christmas card I made on this channel and one was actually this is actually the outer bit because it doesn't have the stitched element but I'm not bothered about this at all and I just used my um, inks on these I just ink blended on these I used the distress oxide mold lawn and the elements pine and I just stuck these together and in order to measure how big I need them to fit into the frame, I just use this bit now because that shows me where I need to cut. So I can basically use that as a stencil and I can go in between here. Oh, no, it doesn't quite fit there, but I can mark it on this bottom bit here, maybe at the top, and then. I know where to cut this off, which is sort of halfway through, halfway in between these. So I'm just going to stick this together and then I'll show you the result. 
Okay, here's my finished card. I'm quite pleased with it. It's a top folding 6x4 card. I did put another panel here in the back. At first I thought I'd leave it white. And I it's just um just thicker paper, 160 GSM, I think. And I ink blended it with my polar blue. And uh, so I stuck this behind and measured it like I showed you with the green panels. And then for this uh, sentiment, I wasn't quite sure what to do. And I thought I had a die cut that said greetings. But, sorry, a die that had greetings, but I didn't. So what I did was I printed this off on my computer. I tried different um, fonts. and Sorry, it's the same font, but different kinds of um, colouring it. So I had this white on black as well. And I tried it in green. And I just printed this off on ordinary paper and then just glued it onto a thicker cardstock just with my print stick. You can use double sided adhesive as well if it's not too sticky on the edges because otherwise your sentiment strip will stick too much. I popped it all then up on foam squares. Sorry, this one's on foam squares or foam rectangles. I use these cello tape ones. And the sentiment is on these strips. I find these very useful um, because they are much thinner and you can use different a different amount um, depending on how um, thick your strip is. And what I do is I measure it on the strips beforehand. So I cut these before I stick them down because I find it a bit difficult once they are stuck down to shorten them. I'll link to those below if I can find them. And a little reminder, I use these scissors. They're the X-cut scissors. I find them, again, very useful with sticky foam tape because um, they really, they are non-stick and they work quite well. Yes, I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. Um, I wasn't quite sure where to place the goat. I did move him about a bit, but I thought I'd leave him down there because, after all, the goats did come down to the town in lockdown. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with the next video.